I'm here at Tech at 2010 EMEA in Berlin. I'm here with Wanda Layfield and she is the woman behind Deployment Done Right. I'm really excited to talking to her about deployments because she is the one woman that can tell me all about it. Ah. And well, let's start with that. You're in IT for a long time, you told me yesterday. It's long time, 28 20, years now. 28 years now. Yeah. And how long are you doing deployments on Windows? Deployments, well, I've been doing deployments on Windows for, I'd say, 15 years, but I haven't really gotten into the deployment tools until about the last four years. And that's where I decided to kind of dive in and make that my specialty. Um, what do you think, so, so you, you stepped into this in Windows Vista era? Yes. And you have some experience with the XP deployments too, of course. Absolutely. So what do you think is the major improvement that Vista and now Windows 7, 7 brought us in deployment mode. Well, the deployment tools, the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit, is one of the coolest tools I've ever seen. Now, previous versions of it weren't fantastic. In fact, about once a month, I'd have to flatten the box, start from scratch, reinstall, and set everything up all over again. I have not had that problem with MDT 2010 Update 1. That's the latest, greatest version. I think it shipped about uh, June or July of last year. So if people are still running MDT 2010, they need to get update one. It's incredibly stable. And it's so cool that it's compartmentalized. It makes it so easy to change your images later on. It's not like you have this great big fat image, and every time you want to make a change, you have to deploy it, make your changes, and then create another image. So it's gotten so easy to change things nowadays. You can change applications that are in there. I mean, within two seconds and you're done. You can deploy brand new applications, change versions, put in different drivers. It's really, really easy to use and very stable. I love MDT and it's a free product. So I don't think it gets any better than that. But if you would describe MDT related to, for example, the Windows Automated Installation Kit and WIM images and tools like Windows Sim, what, what is the role of MDT there? Because you install it, you can create your own distribution share, but what happens then? What, what, there's something with the in there because you need to download it, but what, do, what does MDT do exactly? Exactly, MDT has scripts that run that use the Windows Automated Installation Kit tools under the hood. So all you see are these nice friendly wizards that you put check marks in a box, and then under the hood, things like user state migration tool with commands this big runs, so you don't have to know how to type in that command and you have to, don't have to do it on every single machine. All you have to do is put a check mark in a box and then under the hood, MDT grabs the wake tool and then runs it for you. So it removes the complexity of having to understand how the Windows Automated Installation Kit tools run, but don't fool yourself. If you don't understand how those tools work, you can't troubleshoot if MDT doesn't work properly. So everybody thinks, oh, I can just use MDT and I don't have to go learn all those command line utilities. No, 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 no. You really, really have to learn those. Otherwise, if something breaks on MDT, which doesn't happen often, but when it does, you don't want to spend three days trying to figure out what that tool is doing. If you know what the tool is doing under the hood, you can troubleshoot it in 15 minutes and be back up and running. Okay, and then you discussed it, uh, and, and previously you said, okay, we have this, this possibility to do, to do not deploy an image before you can edit it and capture it back into an image again. You're talking about DISM, right? Absolutely. DISM. So now I've been using DISM a few times and there's something <laughs> with online and offline and what's up with that? What, what, do I, what, what does DISM mean for an IT pro like me? Well, DISM, you're talking about the Deployment, Image, Servicing and Management Utility. And where DISM came from, the MVP summit about three years ago, it might have been four now, we sat down with one of the Microsoft deployment teams and they asked us, why isn't everyone using these tools? They're free. What else do we have to do to get people to use tools? We're making them free now. And we said, you made them too hard. Every single command line has different switches, different syntax. You, it, you made it a nightmare to learn. And so what they did is they got rid of PEIMG yep. for injecting drivers. Package Manager for adding patches and international configuration. So they got rid of those three and rolled all that functionality into DISM. So now you have one tool that does all of your management of your WIM images instead of having all these various tools with different syntaxes and command lines and everything. So that's where DISM came from was to help us do things a little bit easier. But the cool thing, like you said with DISM, is we can now mount an image just to an empty folder. And then you can add things to it, you can remove things, you can configure components, unmount it, and you've just edited your image. You've just changed whatever it is you want to change. Where in the past, you know, you had to blast the image out to a machine, make your changes, and then create another image. So with WIM technologies and VHDs, 
you know, with the virtual hard drive uh, image formats that we have now, you can do the same thing. It's just, thanks to Microsoft, it's called something different. So on a WIM <laughs> image, you mount that to an empty folder. On a VHD, you attach it. Okay. And then you make your changes. Sounds good. But with Sounds both good. of those, you're using DISM to make your changes. The one downfall, you said you've been playing around with DISM, the commands are not short. No. And autocomplete doesn't work. So you can't start typing something and hit the tab key and have it finished for you. That doesn't work. Well, I, I found out that you can, if you use the equal sign in parts, you can autocomplete the parts. You know, that's, that's one of the things I, I, I found out. So that change, saves me a lot of time. Yeah. But still, I always forget about which command does exactly what. And, and for example, sometimes they look a little bit like PowerShell commands. Yes, but a little then, bit. But not really. So that <laughs> makes it, things a little bit difficult. But on the other hand, under the hood, MDT uses PowerShell, right? Absolutely. And so PowerShell is, use, is, is connecting to DISM to do the DISM command. Yes, it work? is. That's so correct. There must be something that would make that work. Well, and you know, you can see those PowerShell commands inside the MDT's mm -hmm. deployment workbench. Anytime you tell MDT to do something and you run, run through the wizard, right before you say, go ahead and you know run this, you'll get a summary page on everything. And you can go through and say, okay, I've told deployment workbench to do this, add an operating system or add an application. There's a view script button and you can click on that view script button and that's the PowerShell command that's going to run when you're done. So if you want to automate processes, mm -hmm. you can set this up, copy and paste those script lines into one document, give it a yeah. PS1 extension and set it up so that PowerShell commands can run on that machine and within 15 minutes you can have a PowerShell script running and you don't have to know anything about PowerShell. Oh, that sounds really good. It's nice. <laughs> Even I can do that. <laughs> Anyone can do it. It's very simple. So that, then there's this other question. Um, when, I, when I pick up a, a Windows 7 DVD, there's a bunch of folders. And there are actually two major files there. The boot.wim and the install.wim. So how come this install.wim, which contains Windows 7, works on every machine I install it on? Uh, in Windows XP, we had these deployments, and, and when you create a capture of a Windows XP image, it doesn't work on every PC. It just works on the PC pipe that you That's because of capture. the hardware abstraction layer. So what happened to Windows to make that change? Because when you do this Isn't Windows 7 deployment change? from DVD, you are doing an automated deployment, yes. a, an image-based deployment. So what happened to Windows itself to make that work? Windows 7, and in fact Vista, changed the hardware abstraction layer, so the layer where all your drivers get to talk to the actual hardware. There were different hardware abstraction layers, so there were different on, on different machines and different editions of Windows. Mm -hmm. And XP, you had different HALs on each machine, each machine types. Now, Microsoft came up with a generic HAL, and that runs on every single machine. So now you don't have to have a different image for one model versus another versus another. And in the past, we, it used to go down to the chipset. No. You know, even when you would buy 500 computers from, name the manufacturer, it doesn't matter who you get them from, the chipsets could be different. So you even had different drivers that you had to get down to the chipset level, and you're thinking, this is the same model as that machine, but my image doesn't work on it. We don't have to deal with that anymore because of the hardware abstraction layer that Microsoft made generic. So that is the reason? Yes. Okay. And Much that, easier for us. Well, yeah. Because I have, I've seen companies that have over 50 or 60 XP images Absolutely. based on Ghost. And now with, with ImageX and, and Win files, they only have one or two left. Right. Now with Ghost, a lot of those were sector-based images. Yeah. And so you ran into the problem if you had to have the exact same hard drive size. Um, or with Win files, you're just doing a file copy. That's all you're doing is a file copy now. So you don't care about how big the disk is. You're not doing a sector-to-sector -sector copy. We're just saying lay these files down on the hard drive, and as long as the drive is big enough to accept all the files, you're good to go. So one WIM image should be good enough for everybody, especially with the driver store technology. That's really nice to be able to put all your drivers into one image, and with MDT it's even better. You don't actually put your drivers in the image, you just add your drivers to MDT. When the client boots up, he does plug and play, and he looks at all the hardware that's connected to him and powered on at that time, and he builds this whole list of, these are the pieces of hardware I have, these are the class IDs that are associated to those, and then it sends that information over to the deployment workbench, grabs just those drivers, and pulls down what it needs. Now, there are ways to tell it, go ahead and put all these drivers in. Don't just rely on plug and play. I want you no. to always put these 25 print drivers to every Windows 7 machine. So you can set that up to work too. So if a client plugs in 
one of 25 printers, the driver's already mm -hmm. there, and it automatically recognizes it for him. Saves us a lot of time again. A lot of time. And they can be logged on as standard users to do this. Because you only have to be an administrator to get the driver into the driver's store. But then Once any user, there, yeah, you're good to go. And then there's this other thing. You, you just said, okay, with WinMages, if you install the operating system, it's actually just a file copy. So if you use, for example, the user state migration tool, latest version, mm -hmm. there's something like hard link migration. And as far as I know, it leaves the user state and application state on the disk. And what happens if, if, I, if I do the file copy? Don't I overwrite the files for Hartley? No, you write around them. So this, this Windows PE environment knows about the files that are already on the disk? It Absolutely. It recognizes user state? Yes. It does recognize user state because it's, there's a map that's built that says the, this data is like cemented into the disk in these places. And so the old operating system file is removed, and when the new ones are put down, it, if your disk is really fragmented, yeah. it can lay it down around all the applications. So you're right. Uh -huh. If you were to format that drive, all your hard link data is gone. So you can't format the drive. And that's one of the big issues I have with hard links is in between operating systems, it's not that often you get a chance to format people's machines and build it from the ground up. Mm -hmm. They're going to have less trouble with it later, less intermittent issues, yeah. you know. So I think it's much better to level the machine. Just format yeah. it. Get rid of partitions, everything, and start from scratch. But then you can't use hard links. But then you could always store your user's data on a server across the network, format the machine, put Windows 7 on it, and then bring those guys back down. Doesn't it really slow down the installation of the operating system when you have to write down a round of these files? No, it really doesn't slow it down. Okay. It really doesn't. And the only reason I would ever use hard links is if you have users out there that have like, oh, 200 gigs of data on a local hard drive, and you don't want to wait four days for that data to be copied up to the server and then brought back down when you put Windows 7 on it. So really, that's the only benefit or time I would use hard links. Other than that, I'm going to store it on a server somewhere, format yeah. the drive. So, just to summarize, there's a lot of things happened to Windows deployments over the last years. Absolutely. And you certainly seem to know how to explain this to people. Is oh. there something we can do to, to get more information on this? Absolutely. Is there something that we can, that we can see or, or, or go through, so some place to go to on the internet? to watch that information? To there's, you know what, there's plenty of places, and I'll give a shout out to a couple websites that I go to all the time myself. Um, Bob Kelly has a website called appdeploy.com. So when yep. you're trying to set up your applications to run silently and not cause a reboot, every application has different syntax, and it's a nightmare to figure it out on your own. Thousands of them are already documented on appdeploy.com. Okay. Johan Arvidmark, he has a website, deployvista.com, but there's all kinds of Windows 7 stuff on there as well. It's not just about deploying Vista. So Johan has all kinds of um, scripts and functionality that has extended what MDT can do past what Microsoft put out there. Okay. And then I've got a new training video that's coming out through TrainSignal, and that covers everything from deployment. It starts out with Microsoft assessment and planning, application compatibility. I explain each wait tool, demo every single tool, You'll know them inside and out, and then lay MDT on top of that, Windows Deployment Service, Config Manager, Volume Activation, and finally Deploying Office. So that's all, everything in one CD set. So that is what we need to do. That's, that's that would be a good start, go. good starting point. Well, great. Well, thank you very much. Well, thank you. And, um, well, I hope to see you around next year at TechEd again. Me too.